Hello everyone. This is the third part of the story, Returning from the Magical World. Chapter 10, Go to a Park. Where does he train or because he has some talent, trains everything himself, another asked. Rock shook his head with an unknowing expression. He said, our plan still doesn't change, we will kidnap Carla. Even if Arthur is beside her, he won't be able to do anything about it. The man pulled his shirt up slightly as he said that, revealing a pistol grip tucked into his trousers. The others smiled seeing that. I hope Lady Isabel knows what's good for her family, added Rock. Kidnapping is nothing more than intimidation and most officials would succumb to such intimidation. Rock and the others dared to do it blatantly because the boss behind them could guarantee their freedom even if the police caught them. It was all something Arthur didn't know at the moment. He continues eating while Alex and his gang leave. From start to finish, Carla was pretty calm even though she was occasionally surprised. As for Bella, she finally calmed down after taking a breath. A small smile returned to her charming lips. Arthur, I thought you somehow got the guts of a tiger, it turns out you also have the abilities of a tiger, she said, looking Arthur up and down. The latter replied, don't compare me to an animal. Even a tiger, if it's here, I can tame it. In Bella's eyes, it was clear he was just boasting. However, the way he boasted in her eyes was something she couldn't criticize because she found it very natural, as if he wasn't boasting, but was speaking the truth. Little did she know that he was telling the truth. He can indeed tame a tiger with his current strength. Are you still going to say that if I bring in a wild tiger? she asked. Arthur felt like she was being serious, so he asked back. Is it here? Of course, there are always wild tigers caught from Asia and then sold in Europe. 500,000 to 1 million euros is enough to buy one, Bella replied. Oh. Arthur looked at Bella with an interested expression. If you can buy three and give me two I will help tame one for you. I guarantee it will be more obedient than a dog, he said. The reason he wanted those tigers was because they were a type of beast that was easy to teach magic and had above average combat power. Not to mention on earth, even in the magic world they are of great help if properly cared for. Meanwhile, Bella stared at Arthur with an expression of disbelief. Everything she said was probably something she did subconsciously as she was subconsciously affected by Arthur's words. However, when she thought rationally, she couldn't think of how Arthur had tamed a tiger. This wasn't because she thought Arthur was unskilled, but in fact, how many in this world could tame a wild tiger? In the end, she looked at Carla. Carla, maybe you need to say something to your cousin, she said to her. However, Carla, who had not spoken before, shook her head while tossing her long hair. She replied, perhaps he can do it. She had already seen how flames appeared above his palm, how something like taming a wild tiger could stun her. Of course, the answer made Bella open her mouth. Arthur had finished all of his meat, he then took the plate of vegetables and continued eating. Even though he felt he had had enough, he thought he still needed a little more to keep him comfortable until later in the evening. Only then did Bella realize all the meat on the plate was gone. But this time, she chose not to comment. Eating all the vegetables Arthur only took four minutes. After that, he relaxed while surfing the internet, reading about ancient legends. School ends around 2 p.m. When Arthur walked out of his classroom, he saw Bella and Carla standing in front of their classroom, looking like they were waiting for someone since their classroom was empty. It seemed that the students in that class left earlier than the other classes. Arthur walked up to them and said, let's go. He glanced at Bella as well. If she tagged along, she would practically be involved in their affairs. We want to do a few things and they might be dangerous, are you sure you want to come? Arthur asked her. He looked into the distance. There was a black van parked there. It had so dark glass that it was difficult to see through it. However, 
he could feel the many gazes from Van quite clearly. Bella who was already suspicious of Arthur and Carla nodded without hesitation, she replied, I'm not sure it was that dangerous or you wouldn't have taken Carla with you. No, you wouldn't have gone either. Her point of view made Arthur laugh a little, he chose not to respond anymore. After exiting the schoolyard, he went in the opposite direction from his aunt's house. There was a fairly large park there, looking like a forest, and in some areas of the park it was quite quiet, so it was quite safe to do any unnatural things there. Arthur knew that they would still take action even in a crowd, but he felt more comfortable in quiet places. The van started to move as Arthur and the others left, those in it looked confused as they watched the direction they were going. What do they want to do there? One of them, a bald man with a rather short build wondered. His name is Ben. Tisk. The reddish-haired woman, Barbara, laughed as she replied, what else would they do, young people these days are pretty wild, feeling discontented in rooms, so they'll do it in a quiet open area. Ben and the other men opened their mouths at Barbara's words. Some want to refute it but cannot refute it. Indeed, what else would they do there? Study? There are more comfortable places in this city. Even if they didn't reach that point, they would definitely put in some hot touches. Ben feels jealous because he doesn't have such a beautiful high school life. He thought, if only I had a beautiful cousin plus a girlfriend that I could sleep with. Because of some of his fetishes, he feels aroused after knowing Arthur, Carla, and Bella's purpose for going to the park. Chapter 11, One Spell Arthur and the other two quickly entered the park. They walked by the side of a fairly small road while the left and right sides were forest. The sound of birds constantly reverberated everywhere, some even sounded sinister. Perhaps the two women were also coming here for the first time, they looked uncomfortable as they looked around. From the city then entering this park gives the sensation of being teleported to a remote area. Carla didn't ask, so Bella also chose to be silent even though her mouth seemed to want to speak several times. While waiting for those people, Arthur made a look around. This park couldn't be called extraordinary, but it was still quite unique in that it had more spiritual energy. Practicing magic or understanding spells is easier here. Mmm. -hmm. After a few times looking around, Arthur squinted at a bush that was quite tall among the trees. He stepped towards it, followed by Carla and Bella. Unfortunately, when they were almost there, the black van suddenly came. It was very fast, and steered recklessly, nearly crashing into a tree. Luckily it probably has good brakes. Even so, the people in the van were still shaken up so they scolded the driver. Arthur saw them because here, they didn't close the windows of the van. Who are they? Bella wondered, she looked bothered by the appearance of those involved like a group of gangsters. In a place like this, it was hard not to worry about meeting people like them. A moment after scolding the driver, they opened all the doors, descending quickly while their eyes fell on Arthur and the others. He he he, you young people really know how to choose a good place for a threesome, if it weren't for the assignment, I would really like to join in, said Barbara with a seductive laugh. Carla and Bella gasped simultaneously at her words. Their faces turned red very quickly. It might have been because they were surprised someone would think that way of them, but it was clear the people were taking their reaction as embarrassment. We were wrong, we should have come quietly, waiting for them to do it first. That way, we can watch the show for free, added another woman. She has short black hair, brown skin, like a Middle Easterner. Her name is Cora. This time, Carla staggered backwards, nearly falling. Bella, on the other hand, didn't reach that point. However, who knew what she was thinking, she suddenly looked at Arthur and for a moment her expression became strange as if she was imagining something she shouldn't. The only one still calm was Arthur, he only blinked a few times in reaction, something that shouldn't have happened given his past experiences. Even for him, it was something that was too much. Of course, he didn't want to talk about it with them. He said, if it's just the seven of you, 
you probably can't last more than two minutes. His words instantly brought their discussion to a halt, some shocked. Little brother, do you know something? Barbara asked. You guys want to kidnap Carla, right? replied Arthur. What? Bella stared at Carla in astonishment. Realizing that this was premeditated and they were still coming filled him with astonishment. Barbara and the others looked around, slightly panicked, worried that this was a trap. One of them even took out an infrared camera and aimed it at various points. Arthur laughed lightly at that. He said, don't worry, there's nobody here but us. That naturally made them more confused. Since you know, why did you come here? Asked Rock. Why? Of course to beat you guys up, Arthur replied, taking one step forward. You're not crazy, are you, boy? Ben asked. When they got together, he never heard anyone say he was going to beat them up. Let's not mince words, let's do it, said Rock. The others nodded, one by one, they ran towards Arthur and the others. Some took a detour to their rear. Bella started to panic, she grabbed Carla's hand, clung to her. Carla herself, even though she knew Arthur was a magus, was also a little worried because this was her first experience dealing directly with criminals. Meanwhile, Arthur pointed his hand forward and said, Sacred tree in heaven, catch them. Everyone including Carla was taken aback by his words, but they became even more shocked when they saw some roots appear from under the ground. The roots were moving toward Rock and the others at breakneck speed. They were like snakes, surrounding them before coiling around their bodies. What? Their eyes opened wide as they found they couldn't move anymore. No matter how much strength they exerted, they couldn't escape those roots which were as big as their own feet. Magus. Barbara said, her eyes looking like she was looking at a god as she looked at Arthur. Bella who was standing behind Arthur pointed at him with a trembling body. A. a. Arthur, what is this? She asked. She glanced at Carla and found the woman not particularly surprised. Arthur waved his fingers and it caused the roots to move towards him, carrying Rock and the others. You should have used your weapons earlier, that would have made it a little more difficult for me, said Arthur. Taking turns, they arrived in front of him and he took out the pistols hidden under their clothes. Well, now tell me who are you and who is your boss? Arthur asked, bringing them to their senses. Chapter 12, Photos Nano, please don't do anything dangerous, we'll tell you, Barbara said, shaking. The others weren't angered by her words as they looked like they wanted to say that too. Arthur who originally thought they would do a bit of resistance held his chin, wondering what had caused their fear to reach that point. What do you know about Magi? In the end, he asked that first. However, they shook their heads in response. Don't you guys know anything? No, we've only heard and seen the results of their actions, Rock replied and he was terrified as he said that. It seems that there really is something that traumatized them. What is it like? Arthur asked again. Rock looked at Ben after the question so Arthur looked at him too. Ben hesitated a bit before replying, it's on my phone, I took some photos at that time. Arthur's gaze descended on his pants and he immediately found his phone because it was protruding slightly from the pants pocket. He took it and asked, what's the pin? 220979, replied Ben. Arthur unlocked the phone then opened the gallery menu. Among the many folders, he found one with the name, Dark. He opened it without hesitation, but it was locked. The pins are the same, Ben said hurriedly. Arthur inserted the pin again. As soon as the folder opened, he narrowed his eyes. His sharp gaze allowed him to see the photos in the folder quite clearly even though they were still in a small size. He opened the first photo. It's a picture of a bus with the top missing. At first glance, there was nothing wrong with the bus, but in every seat of the bus, he saw a pair of legs with a waist, sitting disembodied, of course. Carla and Bella tried to peek, but Arthur used his hand to block their view. 
He opened the second photo. It's similar to the first one except this one is a truck. Where is this? asked Arthur. In Alaska. We never told anyone about this including our superiors, Ben replied. I see. Now, state your identity. Arthur thought he could only estimate how hidden the Magi were after knowing how deep their backgrounds were. If they were only slightly more profound than ordinary people, then the existence of Magi could be said to be quite conspicuous. We are members of the God I organization. This time, Rock answered. It really exists, I thought it was just a conspiracy theory, Bella chimed in. Arthur naturally had heard of that organization as rumors abounded about them, like they controlled the financial system and major political parties in the Western world. Are there any magi in the organization? asked Arthur. If they didn't have magi, then they were nothing more than an ordinary organization. It can also be said as the rulers who choose to hide behind the scenes. They might be the peak of mere mortals on earth, but they were nothing more than children playing hide and seek in the eyes of the magi. I'm not sure because at the bottom like us we just see the organization is focused on science, Rock replied. Science? Arthur smiled. The magic world he came from wasn't a lagging place in terms of science, but it wasn't something that applied to life because it was only the initial stages of knowledge. Indeed, sentient beings can develop in that way, unfortunately it is limited, unlike spirituality which has no limits at all. Science only touches the surface of knowledge while magic touches and controls its inner side. When you have control over the inner side, you can arrange the surface side as you like with your mind. Of course, Arthur would not conclude that the organization only knows science. Maybe they researched both and since their knowledge of magic is still limited, so they expect something from science. Maybe the magi aren't as deeply involved with this world, thought Arthur. He recalled the small worlds around the magic world. There, magic had advanced quite a bit but the magi were still quite hidden. They are like beasts that do not surface as long as their needs are met. Or it could also be that they choose to hide because their level is so low that normal humans with all kinds of weapons can threaten them. Chapter 13, Splitting the Earth Arthur waved his hand, causing the roots to disappear so Rock and the others could move. That naturally confused them, but none of them dared to do anything about it since their pistol was in his hand. Even if they still held the pistol, they still wouldn't dare. Go. Arthur said. The seven people started to hesitate because of that. They were afraid of being slaughtered but the way Arthur had told them to leave made them feel the fear that the hesitation generated. Your Excellency, are you really not punishing us? Barbara asked. The way she addressed Arthur made Carla and Bella feel strange but Arthur himself felt nothing. Yes, you guys can go, Arthur replied. They subconsciously took a step back, looking at each other. Their steps didn't stop but they didn't dare turn around, as if they were worried that something would crush them from behind. You better go faster or you'll be here forever, Arthur said nonchalantly. They got goosebumps, then turned around in a jumping manner before running off in a hurry, even leaving their car. Arthur said something in a low voice before sending almost invisible birds at them. He purposely didn't do anything to them because he wanted to confuse the people behind them. If he killed them, for example, the organization would know he was scary, so they would likely send in a stronger team. However, by letting them live and at the same time keeping them from having anything to say about their experiences here, he felt that if there were Magus in the organization, they would probably meet up soon. Of course, he wasn't afraid at all even though his body here just had magic power. With the thousands of spells he mastered, the number of aces he had was practically limitless. Even if there was an official magus or stronger, he wasn't too worried because he could still win even if he would also pay a heavy price. After that, he turned back. Carla was calm, but Bella suddenly took a step forward. Both of her hands moved to Arthur's body, landing on his chest. Each held his shirt and looked at him from hair to toe. You really are Arthur, Carla's cousin, right? 
she asked. Arthur didn't answer the ridiculous question, he said, you've seen my secret, so. He touched her forehead so she took a step back. What are you doing? She didn't feel anything, but she was sure that something had entered her body. Just putting something in so you don't spill the beans, it's harmless as long as I'm around, and it's also in Carla's body, Arthur replied. It's in my body too? Carla was surprised. In Ant's body too, Arthur answered before taking a step towards the bushes. The two women followed him again and the sight of the bushes made them remember Barbara's words. Arthur. Suddenly Carla called. Arthur looked at her with a questioning expression, what's wrong? Carla was naturally at a loss to answer because she did it on the spur of the moment. Fortunately, Bella helped her answer. Why are we going there? You don't mean to do anything bad, do you? Arthur didn't take his eyes off Carla as Bella spoke. He just smiled wryly. Don't think anything weird, he said as he reached his hand to Carla's cheek, pinching it gently. He turned around again after that, leaving Carla with a red face. She was probably embarrassed, so she looked at Bella slightly irritated, as if blaming her with her words, letting her thoughts unfold. Bella pressed her lips together and rolled her eyes. Inwardly she said, why is my mind running wild? Whoosh! Suddenly the wind blew very hard, blowing the bushes with their roots into the distance. Carla and Bella almost jumped in surprise. In the place where the bushes were, they saw many holes and when the bushes disappeared, snakes came out of each one. They are small, have a variety of colors, some have a tail that vibrates. Ah! The two women screamed in terror. Arthur, who quickly kill them? Carla shouted. She didn't run, but held his hand. Bella was even more frightened, reaching the point where her body froze. You don't need to be afraid of them because there is no snake venom that can kill you while my energy is in your body, said Arthur, patting their bodies together. The birds could seal their mouths, though unable to fight outside at their current level, protecting their internal bodies was easy. Of course, the two women were still terrified even though Arthur had told them. In the end, what's scary about snakes is not only their venom, but also themselves. Arthur waved his hand at them, sending them flying into the air before being sent flying off into the distance. The two women's breaths immediately calmed seeing the threat disappear, they wiped the sweat off their foreheads and tried to stabilize their bodies that were about to fall. What are you looking for here? Bella asked, finally noticing that Arthur had found something. The fact that many snakes nest there proves that something is hidden. See, Arthur replied. He knelt down, then touched the ground in front of him saying, Show me the way, O goddess of earth. Rumble. The ground shook and slowly, it split in half like a grave, revealing what was beneath it. Carla and Bella held their breaths and pressed their lips together, staring there without blinking. Chapter 14, Flowers When the light penetrated into the split that appeared on the ground, Carla and Bella saw a black flower, shaped like a rose, and when they stared at the flower with narrowed eyes, they could faintly see the light flashing from the flower. How can there be a flower underground? Bella asked. This park contains more spiritual energy and it is being absorbed by the trees here. Unfortunately, because they don't have any magical methods, the energy they absorb escapes from their roots, gathering underground. Time after time, the ground eventually grew spiritual plants. Arthur deliberately answered to give knowledge about magic to Carla who was studying magic. The young woman couldn't help but ask after hearing his words. Then, what are the benefits of this flower? Can be used to make potions, of course. Consuming it right away is fine too but the benefits aren't as good as after concoction. Arthur moved his finger slightly and then, the wind gathered around the flower before carrying it towards him. He grabbed the flower stalk, brought it to his nose and sniffed its fragrance. It's called the flower of sorrow created because the spiritual energy here is contaminated by the bad auras generated by life in the city, he added. 
After that, he pointed the flower at Carla and said, Hold it. Carla followed his words, carefully reaching for the flower. She closed her eyes as she held it, seemingly feeling something coursing through her body. This makes me feel easier, she said, opening her eyes again. Bella couldn't help being curious so she moved to Carla's side. Arthur, can I hold it too? She asked Arthur before doing anything. Arthur nodded, allowing her if she wanted. Bella immediately stretched out her hand to the black flower. Like Carla, she looked like she felt something coursing through her body, but because she hadn't learned spells yet, she didn't know what Carla's words meant. There should still be some, let's go around, said Arthur. The flower was still in Carla's hand as they walked. The young woman became even more curious, turning the flower around to look at it from all sides. I don't feel like it contains anything bad, so what happens to the bad aura that's contaminating it? She asked. It's not something bad anymore because it's already something different. You know, some animals eat poop, and humans who eat their flesh are fine as long as it's not overdone, Arthur replied. His steps stopped after he said that. This time, in front of him was a mound covered in grass. There was only one hole in the mound, but much bigger. Arthur approached the hole, crouched in front of it then reached his hand into it. Carla and Bella were still unknowingly frightened by his actions because they felt that there was a bigger snake in the hole. However, when Arthur withdrew his hand again, they found him holding another black flower. Aren't there snakes in there? Bella couldn't help but ask. I'm sure you don't want to see it, Arthur answered, standing up. He placed the flower in Bella's hand and took another step. After about thirty minutes of walking around the park, they found five flowers. Since there was nothing there, Arthur left. Where next? Bella again. The trip in the park made her feel like the world was a very different place, so she still wanted to go on a trip with Arthur. Now it's time to go home, Arthur answered. Bella obviously didn't want to separate now, she held Carla's hand and said, Carla, didn't we have a lot of homework today? Let's do it together, I'll be staying at your house. Carla knew Bella's intentions, but she couldn't resist her bestie's wishes, so she nodded. In the end, this wasn't his first time staying over at their house, so Arthur didn't feel uncomfortable. By the way, about the tigers earlier, are you still having doubts now? he asked. Bella immediately remembered their chat in the school cafeteria, she laughed softly and replied, to be honest, I can't buy three tigers, my savings is only enough to buy one. She smiled wryly. Even though she was from a rich family, of course there was a money limit in her hands. However, being able to buy one wild tiger, that means she has at least 500,000 to 1 million euros in her hands. As Arthur looked disappointed by her words she continued, if it was my older sister it wouldn't be a problem. She really likes big cats so she definitely wouldn't hesitate buying you one if you can help her tame them. Your sister. Arthur remembered a woman who had several times picked up Bella from school or from his house. She is probably around 26 or 27 years old a businesswoman, who is said to break new ground frequently. Before going to the magic world, he admired her quite a bit. Now then, to make her believe, I have to tell her about your magic, is that all right? she asked. Hearing that, Arthur couldn't help but think. He wanted at least two tigers. Right now, he didn't have the money to buy them himself, but that didn't mean he couldn't buy them the next few days. The reason he asked Bella was because she was the one who spoke about it first. However, if it involved other people, he needed some consideration. Bella, I don't think that's a very good suggestion, Carla said. Bella smiled wryly as if she agreed with her words. It's difficult, unless it's my birthday, it's difficult to earn one or two million euros. Carla rolled her eyes at that. I've never even held more than a thousand euros, she said. Bella laughed again, stuck out her tongue a little, then looked at Arthur. So what do you think? I wonder, is your sister the type who would accept if she were arranged by me? He asked. After a moment of thought, 
Arthur had some interest as he felt that maybe he could start a business partnership with Bella's sister. That is the long-term plan. As someone focused on magic, he naturally couldn't take care of things on his own. As for Bella, she replied, so far I've never seen my older sister less dominant than any man. She looked proud and continued, so, it depends on your own ability. I can subdue any woman, but sometimes, there are women who don't accept that, I'm just worried that your sister is that type, Arthur replied. Humph, so arrogant, I'm sure it's not that easy even if you show magic to her every day, Bella said. It's not just about magic, but a certain enchantment. Arthur faced Bella, took her hand before grabbing her waist. He made her waist arch forward so that her neck dropped slightly and then, he brought his face closer to hers. You? Her mouth was open while her eyes were shaking. From under her ears to her neck she was very red. Look, Arthur said before letting go of his waist. He only did that for a moment but it was enough to make her mind go blank. Carla, on the other hand, pointed at Arthur with a shaking hand. What well, what are you doing? She asked. Just showing her a bit of my merits, Arthur replied casually and looked her straight in the eye. After that action, there might be a different impression of Arthur in her eyes. His gaze made her take a step back and her face blushed slightly. Arthur didn't say anything else, he continued on his way. The two women needed some time to calm down, so they were about fifteen paces behind when they started walking. They looked at each other again. Bella said, turns out he has that side too. Carla had a desire to defend Arthur, she replied, I believe he is just showing his merits, as he said. I don't believe it, but it's not bad, men with a bit of a naughty side are more attractive, I'm sure you agree. Carla. This marks the end of part, three of the story, returning from the magical world. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.